Let us start by considering the possibility of facing a kinematic singularity. Another two link. Now, this robot, uh, we saw that uh, in this configuration, when uh, Q2 is uh, 0 or pi, it is facing kinematic singularity. So now, what happened uh, to my end effect velocity? The range of the Jacobian is given by Uh, the tangent line. Any other velocity that I need eventually desire to impose at the end effect cannot be achieved. They are physically impossible to achieve. So in case my end effect velocity is within the image of the Jacobian, I still can solve the inversion because I can extract the Q dot here that allow me to achieve this end effect of velocity. This is rather a very specific and mathematical solution. And it very, it's very difficult that we are imposing a end effect of velocity that is consistent with the image of the Jacobian. Most of yes? No. If, I, if I imagine this is sending on the ground and I pick this up, uh, it's going like this way. Yes, no? okay. Technically. You want to go in that direction? No. Like, like if, I, if I put a, a ground here so that it cannot go uh, down or up, I can still move it. So Come here, show, show me the movement you want to do. No, any any question is uh, you know a, a, a decimal more to the final exam. So. <laughs> okay. Uh, for example, if I if I fix this within this. Uh, okay. There is, a, there is a constraint. Okay. Yeah. If this can only move in that direction, it shouldn't be able to move. Yes. If if I pull this this up. It I, I can't imagine it like that. Okay. <laughs> yes. Yeah, you can imagine. <laughs> <laughs> no, we, we can actually do it. But look, if uh, you move this, in yeah. it means that you are assigning a velocity here yes. and here that instantaneously yeah. is in a, you are assigning velocity in joint space that you instantaneously always have this velocity and then you make this with the end effect. Okay? So your end effect for a very small movement is going in that direction, always the tangent, and then you move and you recover this. You're going out from the kinematic singularity by an internal movement and then you can recover the possibility to have this direction with the end effect. Okay. Are you satisfied? Theoretically, yes. But instantaneously, but you cannot have this direction. You cannot have this direction for the moment. Yeah, but the thing is that if, if, if you put a constraint, you cannot move. You cannot move. If the constraint here is uh, yeah. without any tolerance, you, you don't move. <coughs> any movement here and here instantaneously give you a velocity in that direction. Yes. But it's going to cause like a reaction. No, it means that uh, here you have uh, a, the, the position uh, is uh, P dot del T. Even if uh, this is small and this is small, you have uh, a small movement along the, the tangent and then when you are out from the kinematic singularity, you can assign this one. Yes, okay. Okay, 
the specific solutions, they do work well only in a, a repetitive environment as the industrial one. We do want to have a generic solutions. We don't want to know in advance what kind of uh, movement do to go out from the kinematics in life. And uh, one possibility is to change your function to be minimized. Okay? If uh, now I try to minimize this function, this is the weight of two different uh, requirements. We have already seen this one. We want to have uh, small joint velocities. Close to a kinematic singularity, we have large velocities because, if you remember, it's something that is uh, uh, similar to a division by zero. Okay? So, when I'm very close to a kinematic singularity and I want to invert the Jacobian, mathematically, I'm making a division by small number. At the kinematic singularity is a division by zero. But close to a kinematic singularity is a division for, by a small number, means very large Q dot. I don't want very large Q dots because my motors is not able to follow them. And I would saturate, for example, the actuators. Something very bad can happen. So I want to keep the velocity limited in the range that I know my robot can follow. Okay? If I define this function to be minimized, now here I have two different uh, requirements. We have already seen this one, right? Who is this one? It's Q dot transpose Q dot. It's simply written in a different way. I don't know why. I, whenever whenever uh, possible, I use the same equations as the textbook. Okay? So I don't change it if uh, not strictly needed in order to avoid you to have different uh, nomenclature or something like that. So this is Q dot uh, transpose Q dot. I want to have it small. And this is, I mean, the inversion that I want to, to, to do. So I by including this in my uh, objective function, I'm telling to the algorithm, look, here you can also have an error. At the end effector, I'm uh, willing to have a certain error. I, my solution will not provide zero to this one because physically it's not possible. But I want to keep it limited. I know that uh, by having this limited, I will have a high Q dot. And by adding this second term, I'm adding something that is the opposite direction of the two. And this guy here is a weighting factor. So I have two different constraints, two different, sorry, requirements on my uh, objective function. On one end, I want the error small. But the error small means high, large velocity. On the other end, I want to keep the velocity small accepting a certain error. And this guy here is the weight is in it. Okay? As always, just let us pay attention at some uh, engineering aspects that mathematically can get lost. This here can also be a vector of quantities with different unit measurements. Here I can have uh, uh, linear uh, joints. So means uh, meter seconds and uh, radian seconds for, uh, for the angular joint. And here, I have linear and angular velocity. Okay, so I have the two unit measurements. So let us always uh, pay attention and uh, those are solutions that should always be carefully implemented. Okay, what is the solution? This one. We are not going to to implement again the Lagrangian multipliers or some other methods. We trust our calculus textbook. This is the solution. Now, 
Question for the students of Toyota System. Do you recognize this? This is the Kalman game. It's, I mean, similar to the Kalman game. Okay. So we have uh, look at what look at what you have uh, inside uh, the round uh, parentheses. We have J J transpose, but J J transpose uh, can be zero. Wait, can be not invertible if I make a kinematic singularity. Can be a very small number if uh, I'm close to a kinematic singularity. The inversion. And with this factor, I make it numerically stable, numerically nice, okay? Because this is the identity matrix. The high here is the identity matrix. This is a positive number. I decide, I decide this positive number. This inversion is always numerically guaranteed by this k squared. Okay, so from the numerical aspect, uh, I'm very happy. From the practical one, it depends because I'm going far from uh, no, the desired effect of velocity. And if I want to stay close to a certain surface because I need to make some work and I make some mistake, I can even touch. Okay, so we, we, we should, uh, mathematically it's okay. Then practically we, may also want to find some other solutions, but for, for the, the exam uh, could, be, could be okay to implement something like that. But I can easily decide uh, to change the K here according to if I'm close or far to a kinematic singularity, because see, this is something that I know. I compute my uh, matrix for the manipulability and if, if I'm going to uh, a value close to zero, so to a kinematic singularity, I can raise this up and use this cell inverts. Okay? So K can be configuration dependent. And I can play with it in order to avoid uh, large joint values <coughs> that would uh, activate emergency procedure that I, I want to avoid. Okay, this is just one page uh, of refresh of nomenclature, okay? I'm not going to, to go into the detail. Uh, when I will talk about uh, the settling time, uh, this is the time after which a transient can be considered expired. Uh, if I'm talking about uh, the, the overshoot in a step response uh, is uh, this quantity here, okay? race time and so on. Those are definitions of a basic control theory. I'm going to use some of these terms in next, uh, uh, from now on, okay? And this page is useful for you to, uh, to have, uh, let me say, one place where those terms are redefined or refreshed or whatever. Okay, so now let us study a mathematical theorem that we will use to design the first controller, the kine first kinematic controller. We will do it Wednesday, okay? Let us use a mathematical theorem. We will first see, the de I mean, without any kind of demonstration, but uh, we will first see the enunciato uh, uh, of, of the theorem, the, the, the theorem itself, and then its application, okay? So if uh, I have a certain uh, x as a vector, nonlinear differential equation, generic one. X is a generic vector, okay? Let us use generic variables in order to differentiate from uh, uh, robotics. This is true for, uh, for a generic differential 
nonlinear differential equations. Okay? I build uh, a continuously differentiable scalar function. What does it mean, uh, continuously differentiable? Sorry? Uh, we can make, take a derivative of it and find. We can always make the derivatives of, of one derivative function. Exist, no matter how much Ah, no, it's, I mean, this assumption is much harder than what we need. Continuous and uh, with uh, derivative continuous. In, uh, let me say, we need a smooth function, okay? Yes. So we need a smooth function in R, okay? A scalar smooth function. And we will, uh, in next slide, uh, we will see families of function that can be used at the purpose. We need that uh, this function is uh, positive. This is scalar, okay? So positive. And the definition is uh, for any x uh, different from zero, but uh, null in the region. Pay attention at the way I wrote the variables in the blackboard, the way they are written in the slides. This is a scalar. This is a vector. So here there is a line, and in the slides is bold place. Larger than zero, this is the number zero. However, here, for, for any x different from the vector zero. So this is a vector with all element zero or the same dimension of x, of course. And if you look at the slides, the fonts are different, okay? But we need that this uh, function is uh, zero when the x is a vector of zeros, okay? So there are two different things. Now, if I can demonstrate that the time derivative uh, is uh, <coughs> less or equal zero, then the origin is stable under the definition of stable for uh, dynamic system. If I can demonstrate that it is strictly smaller than zero, the only difference here and here is here there is minus equal and here is a smaller, so sorry, it's a smaller equal and this is smaller, okay? Then the origin is asymptotically stable. In one case stable and the other asymptotically. The difference is that when there is the term asymptotically, for time that goes to infinity, x goes to zero. When there is not asymptotically but only stable, it only means in, in uh, route words that uh, is not going to diverge. It stay around close to the origin. Okay, then I can also demonstrate uh, a global property. So for any x in the, in the Rn space, if uh, my function is so defined radially unbounded. Let us ignore for the moment the last three lines, okay? Let us focus on this aspect. I need to select uh, a function that is positive with the negative time derivative. So the intuition tells us that if the, the function is positive and the, and the time derivative is negative, it's going to zero, okay? It's going to zero. So this is the theorem. This is the, the basic formulation of uh, the Lyapunov uh, stability theorem, okay? Lyapunov was a, 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 a a Russian mathematician and uh, provide uh, a lot of uh, stability theorems. This is the, the basic one. Then we can, I mean, the literature is full of uh, different variants for different situations. So if V, the function V, satisfies the condition, 
then we can, the, I mean, it is defined Lyapunov of function, okay? Now, let us see the interpretation, the intuition. The intuition for x of two dimension is this one. Look, x1, x2, the function v is always positive except in the origin. The time derivative is negative. This is a possible Lyapunov function, okay? Now, and this is seen with the slices parallel to the, to the plane x1, x2. Do you recognize this function? We, we drew this function last week. What is it? Yeah, it's x squared. Yes. The, most of the time, look, I mean, the formulation of the theorem is totally generic, okay? You say, okay, if you look, uh, if you search and, and, and find a certain uh, function larger than zero, but uh, we want to use it uh, in robotics. So we want to use it uh, with mechanical system. And we want to bring to zero something that most of the time will be an error, okay, or a velocity, something that has a clear mathematical meaning. And uh, most of the time, in our case, uh, we will select V as a square norm. So X will be either an error or a velocity, something that we want to bring to zero. We can have uh, x transpose x, and this is the square of the norm. We can have weighted norm, exactly as we have done earlier, with a certain weight. We can or less have a scalar to make the numbers as a, you know, the constant, the two, we don't want the two, and so on. So the, what is important is that uh, we have a theorem that now is going to be a design tool for control, okay? So if we find a function with those characteristics, we demonstrate that a certain variable goes to zero, okay? So now let us reason. Okay, now if uh, x dot is equal to fx, and I select uh, The time derivative of this one is very close from the formal aspect to its uh, scalar counterpart. It's very similar. It's easy to demonstrate that the time derivative of the square of function, you know, is uh, first. If you have a certain function x uh, squared, you have two x x dot. Okay, and if you look at this one, this is very similar. Now, x dot is uh, is given by is given by the physics that I'm studying, and here. Well, here there is my input. Here there is my motors. And there are my motors. There are my actuators. So here, I bring into V dot my degree of freedom. And if I'm able to, to design properly the input, I can make this guy negative. And in this sense, my tool is a tool that I'm using to define a proper controller. And this is what we are going to do, we will do next, uh, next lesson, uh, next Wednesday. So, as I said, uh, in the origin, this was born as a stability theorem. But then the, the researchers say, okay, but I can use it. I can use to to design my controller. And when I'm going to do it, uh, x will be something that I want to bring to zero. For example, the error. 
Q desired minus Q. Okay, I want to bring the error to zero. I would like you to, to, to pay attention to the way we define the errors. We define the desired quantities minus the actual one. Uh, a large part of the community just does the opposite, the real minus the desired. And all the equations, they do have a minus, uh, you know, different from the, the two uh, conventions. No, no, no. You just make the, the, an, another choice because you want to bring it to zero. But you have minus, all, all the formula are the same except the minus. So whenever you have a formula in front of you, just have check for the way the error has been defined. Otherwise, if you uh, make an error with the sign, you make a stable, a stable controller and vice versa. Okay? Okay. We <coughs> need to, to do, to address this problem. And as I said, we are going to do it Wednesday. So the solution of, for, for our problem is the, for, for the uh, differential kinematics inversion is this one. So we have the inverse or the pseudo inverse of the Jacobian. We discretize the equation and we assign Q to the low level control. However, as I said, here I will experience a drift in the solution. I need to close the loop. Need to close the loop means that what we are going to do here is to design the orange block that IK means inverse kinematics, and we will assume that the dynamic controller here, this LC mean low level controller, is already given and it is perfect. Okay, so now we will work next Wednesday and uh, several practice, we will work uh, at this level, at the kinematic level, okay? Then uh, for the second part of the class, we will also design the dynamic controller with you, not with Maya and mechanical engineer, okay? we will be able to design also this one. For uh, the moment, we want to study the velocity controller, kinematic controller, that relies on the assumption that I already have a low level controller, okay? Questions?